Hey guys, <laughs> welcome to Talk O'Clock. Stardate, something something, 11, 12 something, episode 13. I guess you already figured out who my special guest today is. That's my lovely husband, Daniel, who's... Um, oh, yeah. This guy <laughs> here. Hello! I did invite him today because... Uh, actually, I wanted to have him on on Easter Sunday, but he was like a little girl. Nah, I don't have the right hairstyle for that and all that shit. So, uh, with a, ve a week in advance, I asked him, um, "Would you come on on Sunday and maybe just talk about the gaming stuff with me?" And he was like, "Yeah, okay." So, just for you, here he is. Ta-da! The man in the mirror. <laughs> What? No. So, what happened this week? I don't know. My short-term memory is extremely... We played some games, we painted some stuff. Well, you painted some stuff. You I, too. I varnished some stuff. And work and things. Breathing. So Eating. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with the art stuff. Did you Did you watch my video? Uh, yes, I think so. You think or you know? <laughs> hey, if, it, if, it, if it was a moose or an elk, we, mm -hmm. we, I think we didn't agree which of those, but it's, yeah. It's well, it's, it's the same creature. It's just American English or British English. That's the only difference, so. I didn't ask it where it's from, so I... Well, you, could, you didn't have to ask. It had black sh uh, shorts and... A yellow shirt, so it was for the local soccer club. Yeah, but, that but, was obvious. But they, they buy their players from all over the place, so I, I'm not surprised if there's either a British <laughs> moose or... No, a, a British is elk. <laughs> a British elk or a American moose. Moose, that's moose a, or chocolate, that's, is that... That's, that's also a, a, a song in the making, it's like, American moose! <laughs> and now YouTube will sue us for some copyright infringement. Oh, well. We'll see. Anyway, um, so you you obviously watched the video, right? Yep. So, what did you think? Like that, like that, like that. I mean, it's for your mom. She loved it, so. No, I like it. I like the, the comic -y stuff that's less uh, realistic and more into the... Um, yeah, trying to be almost comical mm. sculpture thing as well in paintings as all uh, as in uh, well being a sculpture. Yeah, I like the I, well, I like the eyes because they yeah. they <laughs> look so weird. Googly eyes. Goog yeah, googly eyes. High and weak. Googly eyes. Um, yeah. So since he's really really big on um, airbrushing miniatures and the techniques behind that are quite similar to the sculpture painting question any big differences did you see anything in the, in the video or were you like huh why is it why is she doing that well i i, I would just say that it seems like a like a big miniature version of, oh yeah so <laughs> <laughs> but we we have we apparently have different ways to to approach that because I'm I'm super lazy, and uh, if there's a big roughly flat uniformly colored surface, I just airbrush it all in one color because that's the quick and easy way, and I like the uh, uniform coating that the airbrush provides versus. Um, using uh, uh, using a brush to apply each layer. Well, I don't have an airbrush. You can you can get to the same thing using, yeah. using a brush, doing many layers, and but yeah. as I said, lazy guy, so I like to have just done shh, and then I'm done with it, so. You know what's weird? I'm a different kind of lazy because um, I didn't use a primer on the sculpture. Because I was too lazy. I just started right out with the color. That's why I had to piece the colors and not just make it all yellow and then go with the darker colors just 
layer upon layer, I w it would have uh, looked weird because you could see how many layers there were. Yeah, but, and but with, I was too lazy for the primer. But, but with, with with clay, it's not 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 that big as a problem because it's more spongy than. No, I mean, not I, really, it's it's it not really spongy. Well, it it uh, it draws in the paint uh, as super quick. So the, uh, the the thing is, I have to prime everything that is in, in plastic or, uh, yeah. or metal miniatures simply because the paint won't hold without that. Yeah. So you need the primer to really bite into the yeah. material and then provide some surface to for the paint to actually stick on. Would the colors um, run if you wouldn't use yeah. a primer? Yeah. Like really, like yeah. raindrops or something? Yeah, okay. so, so, yeah. The, uh, it. so the... Uh, and uh, with some... PVC plastics that even happens with the primer which is super annoying so you have to spray the primer on and the good thing about using an airbrush is that it's literally just lightly feathered mm. on and stays the way it is yeah. and uh, it doesn't glob up and run into it. The uh, Battlestar Galactica mm. ships were that exact kind so oh, okay. that I see. trying trying to uh, to prime that with a with a brush you would go over that and then you have one Blob, blob of primer at a point on the miniature that they did. And you would whoop, yeah, have to flip the table. Tables, tables were flipped, yeah. Yeah, well. Now, well, that doesn't happen with the clay. Especially not with that clay. It's it, it's really... It, it has a lot of big pores. Hmm. Shut, shut it. Yeah. Drink. <laughs> yeah. That's my life right there. Um, so anyway, uh, why uh, I brought him on art for the art stuff is, as you just heard, he's a painter himself in some sort. But he helped out with the varnish because don't laugh at <laughs> the me. most the most difficult thing. No, it's the, it's like, it's, it's the thing. The varnish no, in, no, no, no. It takes the, the longest. Button. It takes the longest. It, when I apply the varnish I have, it takes like overnight to let it completely dry. Otherwise, it's so sticky you can't touch it, yeah. and it's not clear. With um, your um, method and your material, it was way faster, and we could bring the sculpture to your mom the same day. I, I said, That's why. Thank you. I, I, and there's more sculptures back there that you might have to varnish next uh, week or something. I say I, I am lazy, so that is obviously the reason why it's quicker. And then, well, if you're slow, you're slow. I. I'm not a snail. <laughs> Must paint very slowly. <laughs> but then again, um, with. Well, uh, which game was it? Mentions of Madness, right? Where I did the six investigators, that mm -hmm. mini those miniatures. Um, we pay. I, I had six characters that I painted, not with the airbrush, but really with the small brushes. And it took me like I don't know three hours, four hours that we painted that night for six characters. And I can so understand that you go with an airbrush when you have to paint like an army. All he did the zombie side uh, miniatures this week, so I can so understand it getting lazy yeah, there. But there's 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 multiple things to that. So the so the characters you you did were all um, unique in terms of yes. color schemes. Yes. Um, with uh, for example the zombie side zombies. Um, that's a lot easier. At least the the color of most parts, like flesh or so. Mm. But, but some people try to alternate them. I just went out with dead flesh. But that's sort of what the color is called, and just make them all look uniform. Or, um, because at the end of the day, it's a board game, and you yeah. want to have the antagonist look like the antagonist, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, so totally. they, you, you want to have a clear picture on yes. the board at, yes. at the end where you can see, hey, these are my guys, these are the bad guys that we want to go for. Uh, with the investigators, it's the other way around. You want to make them pop out, you want to make them show up. And so that's uh, why the main characters always take a lot more time than all yeah. the guys. And you can't really... Uh, so the... So once I'm I'm really bad with sizes. I think it's a twenty millimeters or twenty five millimeters basing mini. So it's like this size. Mm. Um, 
there's not much you can do with an airbrush anyway so it's it's the the priming you can yes. do because that's very uniform and uh, then uh, if you have like 50 or more percent of the mini being exposed to one color or if you well i had that if you pretty much every mini uh, no one didn't the the lab girl she had less than 50 yeah, percent but i'm talking about having eight minis where that is the case and oh not just the same one where oh okay so no, I got it. Got so, it. Got so it. let's say okay. if, for example the, the zombies are a good example because they typically don't have all the clothes and lots of flesh is exposed so mm -hmm. Uh, the first pass would be uh, to to go over that and don't care if you paint over the clothes because they will be painted over anyway later yeah. on. And then the uh, the uh, second pass, if they are wearing a lot of clothes or, or if some of them wear a lot of clothes, for example, there are some they are wearing suits and mm -hmm. uh, you can see only the uh, lower side of the arm, the face, and something. Yeah. So that's when when I would use something like uh, liquid masking fluid yeah. and uh, cover those parts and then spray over with the uh, actual suit colors mm -hmm. and get them more uniform. Um, and that's another thing I'm I really like for. Um, for the comic -y look of these minis, uh, the the colors to literally look uniform and not brushed on or painted on like a like a mini. And if you're using an airbrush, it almost looks like as if that PVC plastic came in that color. Yeah. And uh, that's that's really adding to to the overall effect and, and the contrast uh, of of the mini. You know what I found most weird and funny uh, about sculptures and the minis we shadow stuff this with the same technique and i have like i don't know 10 times the size that you have your minis and then i shadow in exactly the same technique I, I mean, with the, exactly the same color it's van dyke brown that you use as a color well, there's, <laughs> we use I, the same thing <laughs> so with so with, with the uh, um with the small minis i Generally, I don't really shadow them. That's because, what I do as well. Because that's um, so. If, if you if you have someone in a, in a minifigure standing like, standing like this way, what you would do, you would then make these parts. Mm -hmm. You can you can see these parts darker and mm -hmm. uh, use a. a I'm, I typically if I'm make painting on shades, I use the base color of that area, uh, three drops of that color plus one drop of black, and then. You Just, use black. I thought you'd use uh, Van Dyke brown. No, no, I, I use black for for okay. the shade color. Then, in addition to that, oh, uh, I'm, okay. I'm I'm using an, an oil wash to um, to color the recess areas. Um, so the way that works is you varnish the entire mini in a in a clear coat uh, that just provides a good surface for yeah. for the oil wash to run because all the other colors are acrylics. Um, then you mix an oil wash made out of uh, turpentine and uh, an oil color, and that is Van Dyke brown in, in that case, because th typically those are either the brown looks shadowy and dirty, which it's fits the perfect for... color to to use for shadows. Everybody does. Uh, it's it's I'm, I mean hardly I don't know any artist beside you that uses black for the harsh shadows if you don't have something in black and white. They all just no, I, shade with. I, I don't use black. I use black for the mixture. Yeah. To the, darken the base color. Correct, correct. And nobody does that. I, you're the only one that I know who does that. Um, everybody else that I know uses the base color with Van Dyke oh. to shade it because it's uh, black is really harsh. Well, I mean, even for the darkest shadows. I mean, the the other thing is the smaller, yeah, the you don't have to... that you paint on. Um, Correct. The, I think that's the point. The higher the contrast yes. is, that that is required. You need to so have if you if you're doing a highlight on on a, an area where light is hitting, um, you would on 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 the arm, you would literally go and almost do a white line yeah. or close to white line uh, yeah. on on that uh, on top of it. And I think you have to have more the more. Well, the the smaller the figurine is, the more harsh contrasts you have yeah. to have to even yeah. have um, shadows and lights there. Otherwise, I think the the eye would just see it as a blob of I don't know dirty color yeah, or I'm, something. I mean, the the difficulty there is if you're painting, you're having the 
that many typically up close to, to your face and <laughs> it, it is really hard to disseminate how um, how good or bad the contrast is mm. but once they're on a gaming board you, you first of all they're at arm's length and that makes a huge difference in terms of how shadows and highlights are perceived and then it's also on a board or on yeah, an, an environment yeah. and that also has a certain contrast to it um, and uh, if you're looking at game boards, they typically look very comic-y, high contrast, mm. uh, very uh, yeah, strong colors, very uniform colors, not so realistic settings. Um, yeah, they they have very clean colors, yeah. very clean. Like the the prime colors are are yeah. mostly used. Sorry, we gosh the coffee, but. That brings us to the most important topic of the week. Games. <laughs> games, games, games. So, we played a lot of board games again this week. And on Wednesday, we had dinner with his parents. And, of course, that's the perfect opportunity to play some board games. And even his dad, who is not the biggest gamer on this planet, um, played a round of Rampage with us and he really liked it. Although yesterday when we saw him again he was still pissed that I kicked his dragon or Godzilla or whatever his character was yeah, from the that's, board. That's, that's, but that's, that's typically your dad, it's so funny. That's, that, that was that was the, the lure for, for Rampage. It's like, yeah. imagine you play as Godzilla, you may destroy cities and eat a lot of stuff. It's like, okay, I'm in. I, yep. I don't care what this game is about, but it's uh, huge monsters in a city eating stuff. That sounds amazing. And yeah, that's perfect for your daddy. Yeah. So we played a round of Rampage. Who won? You won, right? Yeah. Surprisingly, I, I didn't I didn't expect to win because I was the outsider and I, I lost so many teeth and drew two skirmishes with... Uh, other people like, and uh, yeah. But still, with only three teeth, he could eat more meeples than I with the whole six teeth. So I don't know how he did it, but I guess it's it was because you put me um, into the part of the board where your mom and dad were. So we yeah. all three were fighting against each other, trying to move. And he was like, yeah, yeah, building nom 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 meeples. I did, like, did, thanks, husband. Did, did you did you uh, uh, talk about uh, Rampage and how it works before, or? I don't remember. So give it a try. Uh, if you heard it already, or if you know the game, I'm sorry, but otherwise, it's a cool game. So, <laughs> so Rampage is a wonderful, colorful family game about four. Uh, kaijus or, or dinosaurs or monsters uh, running rampage in a, in a city made up out of little cardboard tiles and meeples being stacked up as a, as a tower. Uh, and essentially all you do is uh, wreck those towers by either dropping your monster on them or uh, blowing air from the head as, as breathing into, into a, a tower. <laughs> Which is um, always the most funny method to get meeples it's like <laughs> also also the best method to to catch a cold or to give other people the the, the gift of giving it's like <sighs> well bacteria is well received yes, yes. Here. Uh, and and occasionally also being able to to pick up a truck or a bus and just physically flicking it from the head of your uh, your monster onto, onto the board. So it's a very physical game where you're about to destroy whatever is on, on the board. And whenever you destroy a building, you are allowed to pick up the tiles, which are worth bonus points. And at the end, um, you may eat as many of those little people that are in your area that you're currently in, um, depending on how many teeth you have. And you start out with six. And for every time somebody else hits you, for example, with a, with a truck to the face or a, a, like pile driving directly on top of you, you lose one of those and uh, they get it, which are also worth some victory points. Um, but ultimately that limits you in the amount of meeples you may eat per turn. 
So I've gotten down from six to three, which means at the end of each turn I was allowed to at most only th uh, three peoples, uh, three meeples. Uh, and, uh, people's meeples. People's meeples. <laughs> Murples. <laughs> no, Murples are old, something. Else. Old, old, old German designation for Murples is Murples. Yes. Or so any any Pimples. small uh, part in a board game that is not made out of cardboard is called a Murple. So it could be th those little green energy thingies with King of Tokyo, yeah. or the Meeples with the Rampage. All that. that yeah. Those are Murples. The highly, highly technical term. <laughs> yeah. And so, so the so the the entire entire game revolves around everybody is, has his turn, does two moves, um, and uh, everybody, depending on your starting attributes, has a slightly different uh, set of uh, abilities to score points. One, maybe being. Uh, for, for me, for example, I, I have the pacifist card, so I get bonus points for each tooth I keep at the end by avoiding other fights. And clearly that didn't work out for me when I lost three teeth at, in ground two or three already. Uh, oh. My mom had the, uh, the exact uh, uh, opposite with the aggressive card, so she would get bonus points for teeth uh, that she got out of other people's faces. Um, which sounds horrible, but mm -hmm. that's, that's how Rampage works. Sun, um, run against this. I think I think you you had the one where you where you get a score if you have the most of the suit guys, the black, mm -hmm. the black the suit guys. Yeah. yeah. And I had only two. I didn't even have a row. I I lost horribly, uh, horribly. And my 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 dad had one where where he has to put the the cars into a very specific uh, place mm. uh, at the end of the game to, to get bonus points for each of those, which is just physically dif uh, difficult or really, from a dexterity yeah. uh, uh, thing. Um, so the, the entire game resolves around being strategic because you may destroy buildings and eat meeples, but not all of them count. Only a full complement of six different colored meeples are worth points and all the others get discarded at the end of the game. Um, and that seems to be a rule that most people either forget or, uh, well, they don't want to think about it. At least it's, uh, so I, I've played very, um, focus on my area, try to avoid conflict with the others, but tried to get my complements of six meeples together, which I think I had two. You so, had two lines, so that were 20 points for you. Yeah, so, so I, I sort of took the lead, uh, doing, doing that and ultimately one while all the others were busy just destroying buildings and punching each other in the face and uh, doing fun stuff. On the other hand, Rampage is not a not a game where you necessarily aim for winning. You aim for having fun. It's it's, yeah. it's one of those those fun dexterity based games where it's just a delight to see everything destroyed yeah. in front of you and them. see the um, disappointment in the face of the opponent. But you know what? I can't wait for our niece and nephew to be old enough to be able to play exactly that game with us. You, you mean to be old enough not to eat the meeples by themselves, but right, to just pretend right. the is monster's it, eating the meeples? Is it eight or ten years? I don't know. Oh, we, I think it's eight. We have to look it up. Yeah. So we have to wait at least, if it's eight years, we have to wait at least five more years for our niece yeah. to be old enough. Uh, so I, it, might, <laughs> it might work with six as, as well. Yeah, maybe. Anyway. Uh, what else did we play? Space Beans, again, and I won a couple yeah. of rounds of that. Yeah. The, oh. I, I, think <laughs> I really got good at I, that I, I, I missed I missed looking looking that up, but Space Beans is really old. Um, yeah. I think it's 12 years old now. It's, and, yeah. and it literally was like, I, I saw it every time looking into our big box of card games, and yes. I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's play yeah. that again. Um, it was the same with the game that we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes that we played yesterday for the first time. Oh, and me yeah. already having it for like 10 years and us never playing it in the six years that we know each other. So, hmm, weird. Uh, we also played the, um, well, it's, it's kind of a habit already after dinner 
to play a short round of uh, Love Letter and see who wins for the night. If I lose the first round, there might be more than one round that night. Because I want to I wanna win at least once. <laughs> so he has, he's like, okay, I have 15 minutes. We play one round of Love Letter. I lose. Husband, whatever you wanted to do, uh, put it off. We are going to play a second round. I have to win once. So that's usually our night. Um, so we played uh, Love Letter, of course. During the weekend, I don't know who won most of the games. I think it was pretty even, evenly distributed, like the hearts. I don't remember. But but going going back to to the space beans, I mean the 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 interesting part about that was that it was the first time that my uh, my we mom played with your mom played, Correct. played space beans. So it is a very simple set building game, and um, in it depends a little bit on on. Oh, I already um, explained the yeah. uh, techniques in the last okay. episode, so you so, can just go yeah. for the funny but, parts. But, so it, it was the, the very first time we're explaining. Yeah, you have to uh, score your sets, and the first one to reach thirty points wins. And uh, um, at some point during the game, my mom is like, "So when when do you win this game?" It's like if you have thirty points from the sets you scored. Yeah, I have thirty two. So do I win now? And, Thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah, and we were we were around, I think, fifteen I would, or twelve points. Yeah, it's I, like I was ridiculous I was, right. lead, and it I was had like, oh, I won. Points. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't. I, yeah, oh, that's no. a fun game. Super easy. I. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, mom, for making us look stupid. Yeah. I had School. thirteen points. <laughs> thirteen, and he wasn't uh, school, much better. Schooled by mom. Their yeah, revengeance or something. This is how it goes. <laughs> Look, son, you can still learn from me. Yeah, really. Sure, and it, sure. just with this innocent face, mm, yeah, I got 32 points. I was like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. She so taught us how to win a card game. Oh well, it was fun. It was a very fun night. You got your favorites, dinner, yeah. food. What more do you want? You got a kilogram more of husband after that because uh, of that food, so... Oh, you're gonna lose the weight, don't worry. I don't worry. Anyway, last... Uh, no, yesterday, not last day. Uh, Thank you, English. Um, yesterday we um, were in the city center for uh, uh, the quarterly game shopping uh, that we do, like board games, and uh, we picked up two new games yesterday. One of them we played and the other one we're gonna play tonight. And uh, they both, what, what did you say on your Facebook? They, we, we caved or something? No, I, I, made, a, I made a word play on, on, on the poker all in and I just were all cave in. Yeah, yeah, right, um, right. Um, because it's both, both games are about ca uh, caves and yeah. spelunking. Um, well, no, one, one is more about spelunking and the other one is more about uh, um, building your life living in a cave. But, yeah, so the, the games are actually the cave and <laughs> caverna caverna so we're gonna play caverna tonight so can't say anything about that yet the, the, what we already know about caverna is that it's not only about dwarves living in a cave it is also the very first stepping stone for building your own house because that box is so freaking <laughs> oh, yeah. huge and heavy <laughs> that you can use it as a as a stone for creating your own house on top of that it's yeah. like uh, almost like a solid block of wood <laughs> based on you know the what? Uh, degree uh, in the uh, the stuff that's in there. When we when we start building our house, uh, well, back back then in time when when architects would uh, build huge buildings like cathedrals and I don't know what the the first stone that they said. Uh, in, into the ground had like a symbol on it or yeah. was the most important stone. Yeah, that's, that that's one, what I mean. Yeah. That one, our stone, will consist of all the parts of Caverna. I will glue them together beautifully, like with a nice color um, shading, fading thingy going on. 
And this is going to be the first stone fun house that we're going to build. I can tell you that. It's like, it's really huge. The box is huge and heavy. What did they say? More than 300 wooden pieces in there? I, I, well, it's, what the heck? It's, I think it's 3.5 or 4 kilograms, whatever that means in your local equivalent of uh, non, yeah. non-real numbers. But, uh, <laughs> Honey, pounds are real numbers too. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a mother yeah. universe. Yeah. <laughs> systems not divi- divisible by 10 are non- <laughs> non-real existing systems. Oh gosh. So anyway. Um, so Caverna, will be the number racism. <laughs> Caverna will be covered next week. Yeah. But for today, we played the cave last night. And I have to say... My review of the game, I have to say, I chose it. Uh, I said I want to buy it this week and not some later week. No, no it comes, I don't like it. It's because no, no, no. I lost two times. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I, I, I like it. And it reminded me of Dragon Quest that we played first time this week. I forgot. And we played Atlantis too. Like the 1980s it game. Week? It, was it was this week. week. It was we uh, check, check, oh, it out, okay. check it out. Check it out. Check it out. The Fatsa book on the lower screen says it was this week. So, yeah, so, so maybe maybe to give someone <laughs> this an idea... This is going to be such a long what episode. ...what we're talking about. So, so the, uh, <laughs> the, the cave is uh, the spiritual successor to another game called K2, where K2 is about climbing up the mountain and surviving in the harsh environment. And the cave is, as the name implies, uh, everybody leads a team of uh, explorers and they go spelunking into a cave. And when the game starts, you don't know what the cave looks like. You have a starting tile and for each room you explore, you flip over a tile and uh, that could either be just a normal piece of cave that you can walk through or it could be underwater and then you have to go diving and... You have to bring your own air supply or your own <gasps> little rubber boat to, to cross the water. Or it could be just a, a cliff where you have to drop down a couple of meters. Like, like with the rope, you need to have one rope for 25 meters that you go down or up. Or it could just be an awesomely looking room which you want to take a photo of and uh, be then uh, regarded as the great explorer that you are for taking pictures of pretty rooms, which is uh, like... Or those, a lot of points. Yeah, those, the mean tiles that I happen to draw all the time, uh, there's like three different of them where you have yeah, to the, squeeze the, through. The squeezing tiles, <laughs> which, that, that are getting more and more difficult yeah, to go through yeah. and take You need like, to... uh, usually one step is one action and you need like three, two, three or four actions to go through that um, narrow path in the cave and I only drew those tiles. Yeah. So I can tell you what it's all about to be in that kind of a cave. So now so the without so, the pretty pictures. So so the so the game is uh, ends once all tiles are yeah. made out. So the cave is completely discovered by everybody. Um, and uh, oh, then um, everybody tries to go back. So the entire game consists of uh, one traveling back and forth from the base camp, or you can have a little tent uh, that, that is your intermediate camp, um, going back and forth, discovering more things, but then again going back to get more rations, uh, to have something to eat, or get more ropes for that cliff to go down. Yeah. and. Um, um, while doing that, exploring the cave. And the more obstacles you pass or overcome, the more bonus points you're getting for that. So every time you use a rope or you lay down a rope to cover a cliff, um, you get points for doing that. Every time you're the first one to go through one of those squeezy things, you get points for that. Um, and I end- like the term squeezy things. <laughs> and at the, end, at the end of the game... Um, there are some bonus points to be had for who has the most of something, um, but you then tally up the score and uh, see what's going on. Yeah. So you could you could be a, a very mean person and send your wife going through the uh, annoying obstacles first, and once she's done that, you can just overtake that because she already put down the rope. You are not getting the bonus points for the rope, but you have a head start for the next turn because you 
just walk around easy on that. Or you could just split up and one tries to explore yeah. in that direction and another one That's what we in the did. other direction. That's what we did. And I was just too stupid to um, draw the easier tiles. When you would look <laughs> at his part of the cavern, there were only ropes and like one one uh, water pond and a couple of rooms with uh, the photographs. Yeah, or shuffling techniques yeah. was lacking. If you looked at my cavern, it was squeeze, squeeze, water, water, squeeze, water. And it's like, <laughs> shit, fuck, I, I needed 12 or 13 actions to even get out of the cavern. And it was quite often that I didn't have enough food. So I had to uh, use up, when you when you use up your food, you can move one tile with the max of five actions that you have in one turn. So it was like, he's doing all the great stuff and I'm like, <gasps> going one space back to the point where you have food and water and whatnot. So, yeah. Pretty maybe, so. maybe, but it's, I, I like the, the mechanics of the game. It was just that I was too stupid to draw. And that, that is the first of three tile laying games that we played this week. So the cave yeah. was the, the new entry. Uh, and now we're going back to the past. Uh, <laughs> when we were still in diapers. And, and no, no, not yet. But we're, we're, oh, yet. we're, we're stopping short for, for a detour. Um, to talk about Carcassonne, Carcassonne mm -hmm. uh, the castle, the is, castle, is the yeah. English title, I guess, is it, or the fort, or well, it's well, it's it's like those buildings where the knights and uh, lords of the old ages lived. So I guess it's the castle. Hmm? It would be a literal or the fortress. Oh well, you tell. I check it out. So on I, the other I, I assume most people are f familiar with Carcassonne because it's a huge mainstream game. But if you're not, it's all about all again. You, it's your turn. You draw a tile. You put that tile onto the board uh, next to all the other tiles. Yeah, and it's start, the sorry, it's the castle. And so building building out your your empire, and uh, whenever you um, you. Uh, Place your little meeples on areas and close that area. So, for example, if you uh, if you build a, a, a castle or if you're uh, building building a, a path and have someone on there, you get points for that and then take that back. So you have to sort of decide: Do you want to invest your meeples early on and try building that out for maximum points, or are you going for the quick score of? Uh, hey, I'm just building very small towns or very small roads and scoring points quickly for that. And the castle is the two-player variant of Carcassonne, which uh, takes place in, an, in a castle. Uh, so the entire game board starts out being limited by uh, um, the, the castle scoring, walls. Yeah, where and, you score your points on. And in, instead of be building an entire country in, in the castle, you're building the interior of the castle, consisting of towers, houses, and markets, um, markets which is which are essentially meadows uh, with little market tents on uh, on there, and, and then roads and, and that's roads, that. Yeah. So you you have the ability to get points for building, completing houses, for completing towers. Um, and for completing roads and uh, the markets are scored at the end of the game so you want they can be worth a lot of points but you don't want to play them too early or you don't want to place your meeples too early because that means you have less meeples in the ongoing rounds to yeah. to, to use for scoring which <laughs> happened twice or the so for someone um, so the uh, so the mechanics are very simple. So you start literally pulling a tile, looking where can I place it, and putting it down, and then you can decide if you want to place one of your meeples on either a house, a tower, a meadow, or a road on that tile that you just placed. Um, also, as a as a little gimmick, which was nice, but I, I don't think if that's entirely necessary. Uh, every time you score points, you advance your uh, scoring indicator at the end of the wall. And if you land on specific places, you get little bonus tokens. That well, that helped me twice. 
that uh, give that help me a lot more than you. Yeah, like there's for example, um, uh, it says that at the end of the game, when it's time to score the final points, that you can score one unfinished tower or house or yeah. whatever. So that really helps a lot. That actually the house help helped me because I always was I had huge towers and huge houses. I like. We played three rounds. In two rounds, I had the largest house and the largest tower. Mm. So I was able to finish those. He didn't. He was better with the markets and the roads. So, but uh, yeah. See, see what I have to put up with. <laughs> so, but what I what I liked about the edition, the castle edition, was that with two players. The normal Carcassonne, it's without the boundaries, it's yeah, nice, but mm, it's it's kind of like too big, it feels too big. With the, with the castle, you have certain points where you can start, and you have boundaries that helped the game along, it's, timing it's, wise. It's, it's sort of also more. Focusing your yeah. attention. I think that is entirely psychological. Oh, thinking, yeah. Thinking about that. Totally. The difference between Carcassonne the castle and normal Carcassonne isn't that big, but it. No, it's just feels, the boundaries. It feels more focused if you have a frame yeah. and you play within that frame. Yeah. I mean, in Carcassonne, the uh, the thoughts you put into that, where do I place that? Where can I. Um, they're the same. They're, they're exactly the, the same, yeah. but. Um, you know, the, the castle reminds me. A bit of uh, the edition that they played on tabletop with the river edition, where you start mm. with a river yeah. expansion, mm. where you have a certain point that you start and you have, uh, what's it? A farmer. You can start with the farmers on the green mm. land. There is no city attached to the river. It gives, it gives a sense of so, direction. And right, stuff. right. And without that, we don't have the river um, expansion, so we would play uh, Carcassonne with without that and uh, we would start with a monastery i think it's the starting tile for the normal carcassonne but still um it's it, it, you have to always attach the tile to one that the other player played with the castle you don't you can start at two pla uh, places at the at the um, outer walls of the castle so if his tile, if I, if I draw a tile that would give him points, I could say, oh, no, I start over here and yeah. start my own little... You can start blocking people easier. Oh, yeah. Which is, for two players, I think that's that was most of the fun. We had one round where it was one tile that we did both not lay down because otherwise it would connect our two yeah. houses and they were enormous like huge and buildings that we had like i had nine you had eight so like 17 tiles for one house so, so one, and we wouldn't score so one 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 of one of the rules is you may place your meeple on the on the tile that you played however if there is already a meeple connecting to the thing you want to put it on let's say a house or a tower yeah. you're not allowed to put your meeple on there even if it's your own so it, you, you could build your house have your meeple on there and then as you advance that house you're not allowed to put another meeple on there however um, if you build that house to connect to another house that someone else already has a meeple on then only those get to score that house that have the most meeple on it which means, effectively, if you have one house no with way. one meeple, someone else has another house with another meeple, uh, they cancel each other out. You can mitigate that, and I did that once with the, um, with the markets, that you, where you start uh, building two markets with two meeples individually, then merge them together, and then connect to the, the one, because then you have more meeple. On that there. was round um, one last night. But that is, <laughs> that is talking, talking uh, a development over at least yeah. six or seven turns to set that up and see yeah. that opportunity and uh, to, to make it worth. But yeah, Car Carcassonne the Castle, uh, 
I think it's a, it's really a great two player it. game yeah. and it's uh, I liked it. It's a, a little bit more. It's not simpler. It's just more directed or yeah. more streamlined than yeah. a normal carcass. Yeah, game. and the and the big difference that you can start at two points yeah. and, and on your plane. But then field. again, it's only two players, and yeah. it's not not ever more than two players. So anyway, well, most of the time we're only two players, so yeah. I guess that's a game for us. And then, then we have to go even further back into the past. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. You, and now we have to, to, to make... No, not that far. Time. Not Jesus Christ. A bit for the party, right? From 1994. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, so I think it's 1981, 85. I think it was... 85 and 86. Yeah. Yeah, I checked it. So we, uh, we, we played uh, the English title is Dun Dungeon Quest, in, in German it's Drachenhort. Um, and I think it was a Norwegian game or something like that. But it's, it doesn't matter. So that is as well a title Swedish game. Swedish or Norwegian? Uh, let's say Scandinavian. And if you're uh, familiar with some of the computer games, that is almost like the board game incarnation of a roguelike game. Uh, meaning you play as a character, a hero, being a, a dwarf, an elf, or a warrior, venturing into an undiscovered castle. And all you know about that castle is that there's traps inside, there's uh, dangerous rooms and monsters inside, and you want to reach the center of the castle where there's uh, the, a, dragon. Where's a dragon with its huge treasures. Uh, we, we didn't ask, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't called Smaug. Um, no, no, he did. He was green. Yeah. He wasn't purple. <laughs> Couldn't be Smaug. <laughs> but yeah. In the movie, Smaug was purple on on the jaws, and the the dragon on the card was light green. In the movie, Smaug was British. Yes, that too. Uh, regardless, so you you start at the end, and each uh, at the end of the uh, edges of the board, and each turn you uh, venture into a new room and you draw that room randomly from uh, a, a stack a bunch of tiles so it's similar to what the cave is like mm -hmm. but the rooms uh, are like you have to draw a room card and that could be just an empty room super simple go ahead and it could be a corridor which allows you to take another step uh, which is typically great um, the thing is, you don't really know where the next room will lead, so it could be that you're taking a left turn into a wall, which doesn't help you at all, so you have to back. Uh, so you're building this labyrinth of rooms, not uh, trying to steer into the center of the board, but you don't really have a lot of control over that. It ultimately is luck, depending on what tiles you draw. Um, he and then did the shortcut. And then there are a lot of nasty rooms like uh, um, fall, uh, pit, uh, pits to yeah, fall into. Pits, yeah. um, there's gates that close behind you that uh, you have you need to, to have stem a roll. open to, uh, to open up. Yeah. Uh, then uh, there's uh, like uh, spear traps that yeah. you can run into. And the really, really bad thing, there's there's rooms that turn, turn around. So you go into the room. And they make a 180 turn. But the bad thing is that room only has one entry, so you have no way back, and you have to find a different way back because yeah. the ultimate goal is get to the center, grab as much treasure as you can, and then escape from the castle. And if you don't escape from the Cavern. castle, if you don't escape, you lose the entire game. Yeah. So each turn there's a little uh, timing track that's getting advanced. I think it's 24, 26, 26 mm -hmm. turns. Um, and then you're dead if you're not outside again in broad the, daylight. Uh, yeah. So, and I think it takes if you have the optimal path. So if everything goes really, really well for you, from your starting position to the yeah. dragon, that's at least twelve tiles. Mm -hmm. So going back and forth are twenty-four tiles, and then you only have two more tiles to sort yeah. of mitigate if something doesn't. Yeah. Work it out was. Well. It was uh, two rounds that you could have the funny stuff in there so uh the um i did play the game for the first time and i was really bad again it seems to be a skill of mine or something to draw the shitty tiles so i was going no, they like find this you. It, yes they I mean, find me they are my precious 
And he was like shortcutting right to the dragon um, treasure room, whatever. But here's the good thing. Um, on the way back, because uh, he had two of those uh, 180 doors, he had to find a completely different way. And me too, by the way. But I couldn't go to the treasure chamber, so I just collected items on the way that I would find by accident and um, pass right uh, by the treasure chamber and go out uh, of the cavern or whatever with another entry. Maybe, maybe we have to explain. So there's, there isn't a, an actual rule that says you have to get to the treasure chamber, but it's sort of we... May, you get a lot of, sort of points there. We sort of house rule that as, as well, because otherwise someone could just run around in circles trying to find treasures in the rooms uh, that are close to the exit and then just exit. And uh, yeah. so we we sort of say you have to try to get to that treasure room at least once until it becomes impossible and then you may retreat. Um, so that was what I did. And meanwhile... He was loaded with tons of treasure, also finding trying to find his way out. And on the last turn, you, you, let me let me shortly <laughs> let me short you interrupt you. You are asking how much treasure I had? Over nine thousand. Well, it's exactly nine thousand, but it's uh, if you're into into uh, um, Dragon Ball, it's like he's over nine thousand. So you know how much I had. 701 because yeah. I didn't go to the treasure chamber but guess what happened honey tell me again what happened on your last turn I was outside already I I scored I started the game so I scored the 701 treasures what what happened to you I was missing one measly <laughs> turn to escape from the castle like, <laughs> so tables were flipped. The wow. Italian gesture of appreciation was made oh. to the board, to my co-player, and yeah. I mean, like like I said, once we sit down for a board game, we are temporarily divorced. I'm sorry, I'm not playing nice and you're not playing nice with the game. So I'm your opponent. You can yell at me or whatever. We <laughs> Yeah, so hey. we're not playing that anymore. Oh, uh, we do. Honey, we this, do. <laughs> this, uh, I, I saw that uh, Fantasy Flight Games is, is bringing out a new or updated version on that. And we I think we'll we'll get that because uh, the new version is supposed to be even more difficult. So that, really? that game is... Uh, like you die on first turn? Even, even that old version of Dungeon Quest is so ultimately brutal. It can happen that you step into the first room, it's a trap, you die. And that's it. Well, there's, it's literally, a game. there's literally two or three events that if you don't pass the check to escape from the room, you die instantly. And that's uh, that's what I meant with it's very much like a roguelike. It's a, you go into the first room, then there's oh, you have you're ill equipped, and these monsters want you eaten, and then you're gone. So that's entirely possible. And. Um, as long as you go in that accepting that fact, it's a great game. But if you don't like the uh, the uh, well the surprise part of that, <laughs> it's like yeah, you lost. Bye. But it's also one of the games that you can play on your own entirely. Yeah. I th I don't th I think the cave you can't play on your no, own. No, it's two players. It's two players at least. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dungeon Quest you can play on, on your own if you if you. You can play like uh, Caverna. That's one to seven. Yeah. The one that we're trying not to learn. That's that's a, you can play that on your own. Against the game. I'm just looking at the clock and I, I'm amazed that we already talked fifty-four <laughs> minutes. If you remember my usual vlogs are like twenty minutes and I feel they are long. And I try to cut them short once in a while because it's like me rambling about stuff but today we 
He excelled at the timing shit. And we're not even done. Oh, we, I mean, we, we only have one one more game, I think, we played. It was yeah. uh, Atlantis or Survive, yeah. as you call it, across the pond of uh, big oceans. Um, yeah. So the... Uh, the one that I lost, like... Twice or yeah, three times, yeah, you, right? You the, the one like with pla- I'm not good with the plastic it's, it's, stuff. It's um, it's very very luck based. Yeah. Um, in but I like the I like the little ships and the little um, sea monsters. They looked funny. It's a and both both uh, Dragon Quest as well as uh, Atlantis or Survive are games I played when I was a child. So that yeah. is very heavy flashback. Um, nostalgic uh, moment with all of those little plastic sea monsters so in, in survive you are living on the uh, on the island of atlantis and uh, as uh, the, the mythological came, history though. told us the island of atlantis uh, wasn't around long and sank at some point in time so survive takes place in exactly that moment um, the board is just a normal cardboard and in the center you have uh, hex based um, island tiles that mm-hmm. you have to Whenever your turn ends, you have to put away one of those tiles so you start at the outer edges and shrink down the the island yeah. until it's gone. And with every tile you take on the on the back side or the underside, it says um, if there's a new boat that's going to spawn there, or a sea monster, or a, a, a was it a, a whirl. Uh, Warp in water. Warp pool in water. No, I was thinking about black hole and warp and yeah, space, little, but in water. Black holes and water, but it's a warp pool. Uh, so, uh, Sorry, yeah. I'm the space girl, not we, water girl. Uh, Blah. So the, you have a you have a limited amount of survivors, and as the game's name "Survive" indicates, you have to bring them to safety at the yeah. outer edges. Oh, you can swim, but not really fast. You can only go one one place for swimming, and uh, the water has sharks and uh, sea monsters and uh, krakens, or uh, in in German that sounds the kraker, uh, <laughs> which sounds way more imposing than uh, it is. And, so these monsters destroy ships, and it's not random, it's the other guy playing those sea monsters. So if you and your meeples are on a board to safety, and uh, it's the other guy's turn, and he is able to move the kraken to your boat, it might be that that kraken is eating your boat, and now all your meeples are in the water. Mm-hmm. Same goes for if the shark is coming around. Sharks really like your meeples, not so much mine, because mine were all in safety. Shitty dolphins. I'm sorry, world, or people that like yeah. dolphins. Damn it. They they were the cause of my losing all the games. Yeah, so, so when they made that game, Peter uh, called and uh, decided yeah. to remind everybody that not all animals are evil. So they, uh, I guess, included uh, uh, dolphins in there as well. And dolphins allow you to or bring you to safety yeah. and are like almost the invincibility star that yeah. you can get because you're then suddenly immune to sea monsters and anything else well sharks can't move on your yeah. onto your uh, space so if, if when you, you are with the dolphin if you if you get on a dolphin space it's almost instantly means that uh, your uh, meeple is safe if you're not so uh, well um careless and put it next to a whirlpool or something like that which happened once i i had you you and your dolphin disappear from the board by a whirlpool yeah. once flip or flipped out yeah no that's that's a catfish yeah well it's also it's a fish <laughs> well they all make weird noises so i'm sorry i don't speak dolphin do you speak dolphin? No. Me, me neither. But I saw in the news today that somewhere, yeah, I think close to Australia or something, that some, some... Some dolphin some, talked? Some, no, some, some uh, swimmer was saved from sharks by a dolphin. So like that, really? Yeah, like really. So that is some... They're super realistic game. Well, sea monsters are... Well, you don't, but yeah, yeah, but... Super realistic. Well, the, the, the thing about the back to the game... Uh, that lacked realism for me was that the sea monster looked like Nessie. But Nessie is a sea monster. Yeah, but not in the ocean. 
It's like a lake. There is probably no tunnel to Atlantis to go there. Why would they spawn in the ocean? See? I guess Atlantis I, I mean, was not in Scotland. There, there's been these the olden times with the dinosaurs and even time before that where there were like monsters so, in the sea that looked pretty much like that without the eyebrows. But, <laughs> um, I, think, I think the sea monster has eyebrows. It, it like, yeah, it has. That's why then, I'm giggling. I just really don't know. I'm gonna eat yep. you. And, oh well. And that was our very, very minimal board gaming week, I guess. Yeah. Did we no. Did something? No, that's I yeah. No, it's just the things that we will soon play. Like tonight and in a couple of months. Oh, oh, oh. Am I am I boring you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, talking for an hour is still talking one hour. But you do that for a job, so. Yeah, I guess. But you 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 also always close your um, presentation with a yawn, like no. uh, bye, customer. <laughs> Any question? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, that's... yeah. No. No. So anyway. So tonight we're we're trying out Caverna, which is, seems like a really heavy, complicated game. And there's like three hours of rule videos on YouTube. Yeah, I, which is like, oh my gosh! I mean, the, so much. So so what I've what I've gathered gathered so far it is uh, very similar to another game. I guess you talk about is lots of water deep. Yep. Um, so it's a worker placement did I? game. Yeah, and, I did. Um, yeah, that means you have a, a number of uh, little dudes that you place, and in Caverna, it's you're a family of dwarves. You start off with two dwarves, and you can I be Feely and you can be Keely? And you can then oh, Lord. Uh, so you can then uh, decide uh, what, <laughs> what you want to do. You can either go out and so. Uh, something Go in the for field, dinner. <laughs> or you can chop wood, or you can um, dig in the cave to expand the cave and then build new rooms and uh, dig, 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 have little dig, dig, dig. little dwarf kids. But first, you have to make a room for the kids. Which oh, I, I thought you have to make dwarf love to produce the kids. You have to entangle the beards to <laughs> <laughs> to. to Spawn a new dwarf <laughs> out of a beard. Oh, yeah. oh. I guess. So. Gosh, you see, we'll we'll probably have a lot of fun tonight <laughs> playing yeah. that game. Either either that, or you won't see or, us next week, or her at least. Well, you will take over then, right? No, I'm still playing then because we're still oh. trying to figure out how this game works. But yeah, no, it's it's gonna work. Hmm. I'm gonna read the rules. Two. So usually only one, when we have a new game, only one of us reads the rules and introduces the other person to the game. But with this game, <laughs> we decided that we both read uh, or listen to the rules on YouTube before we even try to play it. Now we've talked so much about, about board games. Wasn't there something like your art stuff in the in the vlog that you're typically doing yeah not, not this time <laughs> no we did talk about the elk was it just the elk yeah well i did just publish one thing oh. but i did some other art stuff this week too oh, um, I, yeah i i wasn't aware if you if you're talking about that already or no the other yeah. why why are you not listening to me when I because we're married we <laughs> That is Shoot! The, I that was is about to say like that. The prerequisite. Well, I I am still married to you. You, she always keeps her rings on one hand. Oh. Yeah, I my my thing with the weather. It's like I said, spring is not my time, and my fingers are just so swollen that my ring, my uh, not engagement, marriage, the the wedding ring. Jesus Christ. Is hurting. See, it's, see how important that entire concept is for her. So, well, the ring, and the one <laughs> ring to bind you. <laughs> so, um, since I'm lefty, um, 
this hand has more muscles and is fatter anyway. So the ring size here. Uh, there's no difference. That's With me, like... there is. With me, there is. So anyway. I think we keep on rambling, so we might at least call it a day now. What I was about to say <laughs> is that I did some other art stuff. I did write on my novel no, 2,400 words in three hours, honey. I was so good. Even with the hurting hand. So, but I didn't... Yeah, like like with the with the right one, I go with these two fingers, and here I go with all five. And <laughs> I was counting in my head how many fingers I have. Well, thank you. Um, no, I was I was doing that yesterday um, because of the finger hurt shit. I did not paint any other stuff or sculpture any other stuff past Monday. I did the rest. I, I did the last pieces, so didn't do anything there. However, I finished up my art journal for this month, and I'm gonna film that tomorrow and upload it as usual on the last Tuesday of the month, which will be the day after tomorrow. Otherwise, it's Sunday. The day after tomorrow is Tuesday. It's the last Tuesday of the month. Look into the calendar. I'm the smart sometimes. Okay. I'll trust your conceptions of time and space. Because I'm the lord of time and space. <laughs> no, you're no time lords. You are lacking sonic screwdrivers. <clears throat> oh, man. Hmm. I think I'm going to have a coffee now, you too. Yeah. Also a muffin. Yeah. One of those yummy raspberry almond muffins that oh. I baked. First coffee because my wife is getting away if I'm talking too much. Goodbye. You're such a pussy. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm gonna see you next week. And if he behaves, he might be <laughs> on one of the future episodes as well. Who knows? If you want to have him back. That's a threat. If you want to have him back, like or next not. <laughs> Jesus Christ, shut it. Just for this one sentence. Please. So, um, if you want to have him back next week or on every episode, respectively, you have to let me know in the comments. Don't be shy. Um, I hope you enjoyed this weird, extra long episode <laughs> of Dark O'Clock. It's like, yeah. I don't know, totally different. Anyway, uh, I hope you had a great week. Take care. Bye, Lily, bye. And I'm going to see you on Tuesday next week with the Art Journal Vlog. Bye-bye. Take care.